education, parents as teachers blue ribbon designation presentation, the Wichita Public Schools Parents as Teachers Program, or PAT, has been designated the Blue Ribbon Award, which recognized PAT as an exemplary affiliate delivering high quality services to children and families. Tonight's presentation highlights the recognition and benefits to the, to the district. This presentation is for the board's information. Good We're evening. glad to have you here. It's good to hear about our Parents as Teachers program. Yes. Good evening, Dr. Thompson, President Logan, and board members. I'm excited to be here this evening to present to you our Parents as Teachers program. As you guys know, not all superheroes wear capes. And so I would like to introduce you to our superheroes of Parents as Teachers who are sitting obviously right behind me. So you will see Tracy Schuler here, who is a parent educator, and Angela Lampy, Jeannie Miato. Charity Warden and Sarah Eastman uh, Olivius. Sorry, I wanted to make sure I got all their names right. And they are our awesome five parents as teacher educators. And then here is Mary, uh, Maria Sanchez Lopez and Scarlett Tolley, who also are assistants that help with all of the uploads, the data, getting um, everything entered. So, this a fantastic group of superheroes sitting behind me to support tonight. So, I want to thank them for all their hard work, too. So. Um, parents as Teachers, what is it? So Parents as Teachers is an international early childhood parenting education family support program that supports families throughout pregnancy through age five. It is voluntary and free of charge to families living within our public school boundaries. We do have a literacy focus. We recognize that parents are the first teachers of our students and our job is to empower parents to be able to have those skills to teach basic literacy such as symbolic development, listening activities, spoken language, knowledge of print and books, written language, and language sounds. So we do provide books with our home visitations, all our group connections, and our play groups. We have four areas that Parents as Teachers supports the parents as a whole. First, we do personalized visits. These visits are done in um, their home. We share age-appropriate activities and academic development as well as parenting information for our families. For group connections, we have an informal hour with a parent educator in a safe and educational environment to encourage stu um, students with a wide range of age-appropriate activities and skills. And then we also provide screenings for families for including health, hearing, vision, and also um, we're able to provide a resource network for parents if they need wraparound services. So we have great partnerships with United Way, Healthy Babies, uh, KCSL, Rainbows, and also any of our 211 Connect throughout the, the community. I wanted to kind of share this slide with you. I thought it was an important slide to show you. In 2009 and 2010, the state, everything that's in blue, the state was serving parents as teachers. Through budget cuts, you can see now in 2019 and 2020, all the light blue is what we currently serve as a state for parents as teachers. So you can see that this program was a program that was cut through all the budget cuts throughout the years. So we're really happy that our district is investing in parents as teachers to bring some of that back for us. Through the years, um, starting in 2016, 2017, we had 2.5 parents educators. In the past, we were up to 16, then 12, then 14, and then we went back down to 12, and so eventually down to five, and then ended with 2.5 in 2006, 2017. So we served 42 families and 66 children, and our <coughs> home visitation count was about 368. In 2017-18, <coughs> we still had 2.5 educators. We increased to 59 families served, 78 children, and we still conducted 368 um, home visitations. So what that includes is like parents that had babies or siblings that got picked up in the program, or also um, parents can qualify with our protective factors to receive two visits a month or one visit a month. It just depends on what protective factors they have as to how many visits we provide that family per month. In 2018-19, 
As we worked on some of those strategic plans, we knew parents as teachers was an important part of the whole reading proficiency. Also, making sure that parents felt like school was a safe and a, and a welcoming place for their, their children because you know some we are the first experience they have with Wichita Public Schools. So we knew it was important to get them into schools for parent for playgroups and for group connections so that they started you know experiencing some of our schools. So um, with the increase in FTE that you guys allowed, the four full-time FTEs, we were able to increase our families. We're serving 104 families with 133 children served and then 872 home visits. Currently this year, we increased again and now we have five parent educators. Thank you, thank you. We now have 121 families that we're serving and 169 um, children and then visit count will be at the end of the year. So. We're super excited to see our numbers rising. We are very fortunate because our staff has went through intensive training at Parents as Teachers National so that they can become certified national parents as teachers. It is an extensive five-day training and then they go back for another two-day training and then of course all the training that we do in our school district for them. We also partner with several community partners and we provide training within our community such as WIC, KU Medical Center. Um, I do a lot with healthy babies so we encumber some of those home visiting programs in order to get families in. We share families as well in order to provide support for them. So we've been doing so well these last couple years with our APR report which measures um, what we do with families, what we do with our home visits, the protective factors that we're serving, and um, the quality of our home visitations that we were invited to apply for the quality improvement, which is the blue ribbon status. So we did take that on. It was a, um, a year-long process to do this. We had to revamp all of our procedures and practices to get them aligned at a national level. We also had to uh, make sure that our affiliate performance measurement plan was solid and make sure that any, if there was anything that we needed to do to refine, we would do that. And I'm going to show you something that we found that we needed to refine. And we've actually put those actions into place now. So what the process represents is that commitment from WPS and Parents as Teachers International looking at the comprehensive assessment of programming along with the continuous improvement that we make. So with that, we were awarded the Blue Ribbon Award, as you guys know. Really exciting. When I opened up that email, it was like a little kid in the candy store. I was like, ah! Because the amount of work that we put into this, it was hours and hours. And I do want to thank Tracy Schuler too. She was key instrumental in helping us to get the quality improvement process done. She's been our parent educator through all these years. So um, her knowledge, too, helped us as we were inputting that. And then, of course, our team inputted along the way as well. Um, but this also gives us now, an, uh, you know, for parents to know that we are a quality program, we're recognized nationwide, and we're not alone. We're very fortunate that 14 other districts throughout our state was awarded this this year. So that's a big, uh, a big celebration for our state as well. So as you see, we did get Blue Ribbon. Again, woohoo. Um, one of the pieces that we did not have solid, that we knew we really had to work on, is we did not have an advisory council. So yes, we participate in the Cedric County Early Childhood Correlation, and I give reports um, to the community members every quarter for that. But we didn't have anything that was in our own district to have really have us look at our own program and to receive information more from community members. So as you can see, November 7th, we did put this into place, and we knew when we entered quality improvement that this was not something we had in place, and we were not going to be scored for this, so we knew you know, right away that we weren't gonna meet this part of the 100 essential requirements. But we now have it in place. We are um, excited to have, we have a really solid board that includes like a um, labor and delivery nurse. We have businessmen throughout the community. We have the Vice President of Bank of America. We have Child Start, United Way, Top, um, RCB Bank, KCSL, Interest Bank Arena, Connecting Point, and we have local district representation from the elementary office, and then um, Andy Geeson, who's our assistant superintendent. And then we also have parents that are in our program serving on the advisory council. So our first meeting went great. We did get a lot of, um, we were, it was an exciting time for us as we had just received the award. And we've already gotten a lot of community members that have said, hey, we'll sponsor this. Hey, you need books for this. Hey, here's an event we'll sponsor. So from that and receiving the award, it's been a great partnership to get this up and going. So that is a good piece that we have in place now. 
I wanted to share with you quickly just a few of our, our big events that draw a lot of families in. This is Blockfest. I thought you might enjoy seeing kids. Um, at Blockfest, we do a lot of hands-on learning with um, you know, science, math, measuring, uh, building things, talking about parameter. We had so many families that wanted to come to this, we in fact had to do two different sessions mm -hmm. so we could get all of the families into this event. So this is a big event that we held this year and last year. Babes and Books is something that we do at Botanica all through the summer. And on Fridays, um, students can come and participate in Babes and Books. They get a free book when they attend. They also get to go into the um, the whole Botanica area. There's sensory activities and they get to do um, different activities in that children's garden. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but it's an amazing space. We also now, um, because I'm able to merge some of our programs, we have been uh, doing a couple events with our migrant program. So this is something that we did with our migrant program this year. We included our migrant birth to age five students and our parents as teachers birth to age five. And we did a fall into reading, a big fall harvest parade. MES was turned into a magical place for students. We did an art activity. We did story time. We gave books away. Delta Dental sponsored um, dental kits, giving the basic sponsored hygiene kits for our families. And the local reading council provided books for us. So another great event. We had a lot of parent turnout, great turnout. Um, we saw lots of things. Um, all of my MES departments dressed up and had booths and kids trick-or-treated and it was just a fun event. So it's really great that we can pull some of our uh, programs together that all have that, that home visitation piece included. Art in the Park is another event that's highly attended in the summer. We actually do art in the park <laughs> and um, a, a lot of different activities that we provide for parents. We also have splish splash events. This one is like measuring, we have water walls, sink and float. So a lot of science and math skills that we do as, long as, as well as reading. Again, books are provided at all these events. Friendship Day was another joint effort that we did with parents as teachers and our migrant department. And so you can see here families came through again. It was an activity sponsored at MES and it was very well attended as well. And that was on Valentine's Day. Jammin' and Jammies is one of our big pull two that we do at night. We get a lot of dads at this one. And we talk about uh, bedtime routines. We also talk about music and songs that you can do with students, some literacy activities, and then we have calming techniques. Um, we're digging more into that yoga calming techniques that parents can do with students at home too, but this is another event that's well attended. One of the great things that we've been able to do is support at the, lo at the local and state level. So we do support parents as teachers statewide. We do participate in Day at the Capitol. We also join KPOTA to advocate for parents as teacher fin financial support from the state. And then we attend professional development with them as well. Some of our weekly play groups, just so that you're aware, we have a Path to Kindergarten group that's hosted at Dunbar. We um, have a lot of uh, skills and activities and it's a very structured, uh, activities for kids that they would actually it's it's in a classroom that is set up like a classroom as well and students have their experience with um, reading math science social studies art activities how to get along social behaviors and those types of activities that we do at Peterson is the same thing um, we host for zero to five year olds I let me be more specific on the um, Pathway to kindergarten, that is for students who are getting ready to enter pre-K and kindergarten. And then Peterson's playgroup is the uh, birth to age five as well. And same kinds of activities. We're actually in that red school schoolhouse at Peterson at the front. It's a very great little um, space. And parents come and they get all of the social activities and interactions as well. Jackson Elementary is where we host another playgroup. We have another classroom there. And same thing, zero to age five, we have lots of activities, um, and everything is changed weekly for fam families and parents to go through. So it's just like a classroom for them. One thing that we do find with our playgroups is that parents love coming because they like the social aspect of it. Some parents don't have that social outlet, so it helps them to interact with other parents in the community and in our program, and also to see like what a classroom setting would be and get their students experience some of that with playing together and working together. This year we were fortunate to open Cleveland Elementary, another playgroup that also is um, taking our little ones and um, we just, so we're building on the program as we open more sites. We needed a site down south because we have a lot of south side families and all of our play groups were, were more north. So we wanted to make sure that we were encumbering that part of the city. A great play group that we have, we started two years ago 
with an intergenerational playgroup. This is an amazing playgroup. The um, Kansas Health Foundation, a couple years ago, gave us some money to start this up. We actually went into Wichita Presbyterian Manor. We are in their memory care unit. So the residents that are in that memory care unit come down and they work with our students and our families. We do a lot of uh, planning of activities that help both sides for like fine motor, gross motor, some um, experiencing like um, sensory, and also you wouldn't believe it, but they love story time. Even our seniors love story time. They get a snack in story time. And they were so impressed that we gave them free snacks. So I mean, they were like, oh, is this free? Yeah. So it's, it's very fun. They interact well with the students. They like it. Um, the staff is great and amazing to work with. It's been a great partnership, so much so that we've increased from one time a month to two times a month now. So we're super excited to be in um, Wichita Presbyterian Manor. So we want to end by just saying thank you so much for all the support that you give parents as teachers. And we really appreciate everything that you do for us and the continued support. And we know that um, the strategic plan alignment for us is is big, and we want to do everything we can to support that or those early learners. So, um, we do have questions, Ben. Yeah. Um, so, I, I just wanted to express my appreciation of the Parents as Teachers program. Not only do most of you know that I have a little who is now in pre-K, um, but also my mother-in-law is a retired parent educator. So we awesome. have a, a family connection to the Parents as Teachers program too. So nice. that's neat. Yeah. That's neat. Um, I have a question on how people are screened into this program. So really, it is a a first come first serve. Once um, we had our award announced, we did get a lot of inquiries, as you can imagine. So we're back up to a little over forty on our waiting list. But as children age out, we immediately get more children in. So it, we, we, we just do a first come, first serve basis is how we screen students. Okay. We communicate with parents um, when they're on the waiting list. We make sure they're aware they're still on the waiting list. Um, these ladies right here take care of making sure that we have everything we need from them so that as soon as there's an opening, I mean, they're great. They step right in. Who's next on the list? Who can we call? Great. Well, this is a very good program, and congratulations to all of you on being awarded the blue ribbon. That's a big deal. So it's we're big proud deal. of you. We get it for five years. I know. That's great. Yeah. So, Well, thank you, and yeah. thank you for a wonderful presentation, yes. too. Thank you. Next item. Consent. <laughs>